What's going on at the Secret Service lately? This past Sunday, you may have heard the agency called home three agents from the Netherlands just before President Obama's arrival for talks in The Hague. One agent had reportedly been found drunk inside a hotel. Before that, there was the prostitution scandal in Colombia two years ago. That's when 13 agents and officers were accused of partying with some ladies at a hotel in the seaside resort of Cartagena, where they were staying before the president's arrival. We're joined now by Jonathan Bell, federal employment attorney who's represented Secret Service agents in the past. He's with us live. Jonathan, does this happen in every administration? It appears that it does happen in every administration. Uh, apparently before this administration, it was mostly kept secret and, until now. So why uh, now? I, I don't know why now. It seems like it's just getting a lot of media attention. Uh, people are reporting it, and it's coming to the public eye. So that's why they're trying to be more strict with the Secret Service agents by passing new policy to um, try to prevent this type of behavior. But uh, every now and then it's still going to happen. Do you think the president's safety is ever at risk, at least in these couple of cases I just mentioned? I, I don't believe the president's safety is ever at risk. Uh, you know, Secret Service agents fly in a day before to kind of sweep everything, walk around, do the same exact walk the president would do uh, to ensure that everything's safe, and then they go out and they blow off steam uh, after hours. All right, so is this a case of a few bad apples spoiling the bunch here, or is this a kind of an out-of-control culture with people who think they can do whatever they want. Well, I'm, I'm hesitant to say it's a few bad apples until there's a full investigation. The, the beauty of being a federal employee and in the Secret Service is, although these, these allegations are out there, there is going to be a full investigation as to what occurred, as in Cartagena. I mean, when I was representing one of the Secret Service agents in that situation, the Secret Service and Department of Homeland Security went out to Cartagena and interviewed uh, the prostitutes, the people involved, and there was a full-scale investigation uh, to, to, to see if these allegations are substantiated. Are prostitutes often good witnesses? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even know how to respond to that one, but, you know, listen, it, 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 it is what it is. They did, they did get some relevant information on that case uh, through the course of their investigation, and the beauty of the process is there is due process. Yeah. These Secret Service agents can put, can put in a defense, uh, they, they were sent home on administrative leave pending an investigation. So there really has been no disciplinary action yet. Um, the Secret Service agents, just like any other federal employees, if there's allegations of misconduct, they are getting paid while they're on administrative leave uh, during the course of an investigation. Wow. So it's been two years, with no decisions, and they're still getting paid? No, no I'm, I'm talking about this, this particular matter. Um, uh, in Amsterdam. The, the, oh, okay. the, the, the other agents were either forced to resign or, or ultimately were terminated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. We're speaking with Jonathan Bell, federal employment attorney who's represented some Secret Service agents in the past, trying to figure out what's going on with the Secret Service lately. Uh, so what kind of trouble do you think this current group of three could be in? Well, to, to, to the extent the allegations are substantiated through investigation, the first thing that the Secret Service is going to do is, uh, is issue them a letter of intent to go after their security clearance. Once they get uh, issued that letter, there are alle specific allegations that they could respond to. They could respond both in writing and orally, and then ultimately a decision is made. If the decision is made to revoke the clearance and the clearance is a requirement for the position, soon after that they're going to be terminated. Right. Uh, quickly, go through, I, I guess, one or two of the new rules that might have been in place since the incident in Colombia. Sure. Well, 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 the first rule that, that's uh, uh, applicable to this matter is the 10-hour rule. They're really not supposed to drink any alcohol within 10 hours of them going on duty. Uh, so we don't know what time they were drinking. We don't know what time they were technically on duty. I don't know if they abided by the rule or not. Uh, people are assuming they're not, but that could be the wrong assumption. Yeah. We have to, and, that's, and that's, again, the point of the investigation. Very good. That's one rule. The, yep. Another rule that came out of Cartagena was the fact that they can no longer bring foreign nationals to their hotel room where other Secret Service agents stay. That, it's that's obviously a direct result of the Cartagena matter. Right. It's amazing that you have to even put in rules like that in place. Jonathan, thanks so much. Jonathan Bell, federal employment attorney who's represented Secret Service agents in the past, including one from the incident in Colombia. It's